A colleague of mine recently made me aware of a disturbing trend that seems to be occurring under the radar. So we're all very acquainted with the opioid epidemic, and it has got a wide breadth of awareness in our society, and this trend has been several decades in the making. So while this has been going on, my colleague pointed out to me that last decade, the DEA has reported an increase in seizures of methamphetamine at the border, increasing from 70, 8,700 kilograms in 2012 up to 30,000 kilograms in 2017. Additionally, the purity of this methamphetamine is increasing, and on the street, the price per pure gram has been going down. So this is not a good thing. While this is going on, the admissions into public treatment facilities with methamphetamine-related cases has been increasing significantly. And Quest Diagnostics reported in their 2019 drug testing index <clears throat> that the positivity rate for hair had doubled between 2014 and 2018. So this led us to think about, are uh, we seeing the same trends uh, with pregnant women or in utero exposure? So we proposed this question. Would similar increases be observed in a national data set of umbilical cord tissue analysis. Several years ago, we had a similar situation with marijuana in Colorado when they had their law change and relaxed their, um, their, their, their laws towards uh, recreational marijuana. And so we analyzed a survey of meconiums collected prior to the law and after the law. And we did not see a significant increase in the prevalence of meconiums positive for marijuana metabolite. But what we did see was a significant increase in the amount that we found. Uh, before the law, we, the, the median concentration was 142 nanograms per gram of marijuana metabolite. After the legislation, we found 212. This was a significant increase. So the specimen types that are available for newborn toxicology are blood, which is very expensive to do and has a very limited detection window. So this is not a logical choice. Maternal specimens could be used, but many jurisdictions require reporting positive results to the state. And under these forensic conditions, we would need to get maternal consent. So that's not an obvious uh, choice uh, for a newborn toxicology program. <clears throat> newborn urine was used for many years. Um, but again, specimen volume is very small, detection window is very limited and it's very difficult to collect a urine from a newborn. Newborn meconium was developed as a replacement for that, has a long window of detection, up to 20 weeks, um, is non-invasive on the collection, but as a drawback, uh, it's, it's not a single collection, it's multiple collections over time, multiple collectors, uh, and, and, and many babies don't have enough meconium for testing, either it's passed in utero, the meconium is missed, um, or they're premature and there's just not a lot to begin with. So a lot of specimens, too many specimens, are, are rejected for quantity not sufficient for analysis. So umbilical cord was developed as a replacement for meconium. It too is non-invasive, but it is a single step collection. Um, it's available in, in sufficient quantity on every birth um, and, and, and there's, there's no need to have any specimen to be rejected for quantity not sufficient. And if the cutoffs are thoughtfully considered, you can have equivalent sensitivity as you do with meconium. So this is not a liquid. You don't just pour it in a tube and put it uh, on an instrument and get a result. You have to prepare it. And so we have, a, 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 we have to homogenize the tissue and then we extract the homogenate we send that extract over to our immunoassay laboratory where we do an ELISA test, enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. Negatives are reported out and presumptive positives are reflexed back into the laboratory. And now we focus a second aliquot of that specimen for a confirmation test for that drug class using liquid chromatography tandem mass spectrometry. Performance characteristics of our neogen methamphetamine one step ELISA. We chose a five nanogram per gram cutoff because that gave us equivalent sensitivity as meconium. 
we have a two standard deviation separation at the cutoff between our plus and minus 50% controls. And the uh, CVs for those three uh, uh, controls are less than 5%. For the confirmation assay, uh, we targeted uh, four levels to challenge the assay, and the accuracy of those uh, challenges were within 10%. And the precision intra and inter assay were all less than 10% as well. Uh, and, and so this assay passed the requirements of the FDA uh, guidance um, that is commonly used in, in the laboratory. Limit of detection for this assay is one nanogram per gram. Limit of quantitation is two nanograms per gram. So on for our study. We queried our database from January of 2012 to December of 2019. During that period of time, we received for forensic analysis 347,509 umbilical cord specimens. Of those, 15,708 were positive for methamphetamine. <clears throat> That's four and a half percent. The median concentration of methamphetamine in those positive specimens was 129 nanograms per gram. When we looked at the concentrations that we found over time, there was really no increase in concentration like what we saw with the uh, meconium uh, specimens in Colorado before and after the marijuana law changes. So this was interesting, why is this different? But when we looked at the prevalence rate, unlike Colorado, we did see, uh, unlike Colorado with, with the marijuana, we did see a significant increase in the prevalence of methamphetamine. It went from 2.76% up to 5.39% between 2012 and 2019. And a chi-squared analysis of those two points uh, shows that there is a significant difference there between those two years. As we look closely at this chart, <clears throat> it does appear that we have maybe more than one trend in this data set. So we conducted a join point analysis with the join point regression program that we downloaded for free at the National Cancer Institute. And uh, when we plugged in our quarterly positivity rates, because annually there was not enough points, uh, we found that there was indeed three different trends within this trend, uh, with the segment between the fourth quarter of 2014 and the first quarter of 2017 uh, having the highest trajectory of the three trends. So my first question is, is what was special about that time period that caused that uh, trajectory to be much higher than, than the other two? So in summary, uh, we have observed a reemergence of methamphetamine uh, utilizing our umbilical cord database. Uh, and it seems that this uh, started back around 2012. In utero, methamphetamine exposure is not good. It uh, has uh, associated with many negative health consequences for both mother and child. Concentrations in umbilical cord uh, are steady, which was unlike the meconium carboxy THC concentrations um, with the marijuana laws in Colorado. So this was, this was a, a, a different than that. And the prevalence was increased, which again is different than we saw with marijuana in Colorado. Joint point analysis uh, demonstrated we had three trends within the trend with the uh, segment between the fourth quarter of 2014 and the first quarter of 2017 having the highest trajectory of the other, three, of the other two segments. Thank you and have a good day.